All right, just a little disclaimer before we get into the podcast. When I had recorded this with Ben Saint, I was planning to do a weekly podcast, which is why I referenced the weekly lowcast a few times throughout this. I just wanted to say that I'm no longer planning to do a weekly podcast. This is just a one-off thing. But if you really enjoy it, I guess you can let me know down in the comments below, and maybe I'll consider doing podcasts more often. Thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to the weekly Lowcast. I am Low Art. This is a podcast where we discuss a different animated movie every week. This week I am joined, hailing from Patreon.com, by Ben Saint. Sl- How are you doing, man? Slash slash Ben Saint. Slash Ben, ben Saint. Saint. I'm sorry. Ben Saint is the name. Uh, being a fucking freak is my game. Uh, can I can I say fuck? <laughs> Swear to your heart's content. Okay. I invited you on here. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I've ruined it. It's ruined. All right. Um. Okay. So, the first movie that we're looking at, the first film, as suggested by Ben Saint himself, is yes. Pooh's Grand Adventure, The Search for Christopher Robin. Yes. I forgot uh, it had, had the subtitle. I forgot it had a long oh, yes. title. Um, but yeah, I'm doing... I'm I'm doing a poo a win, new adventures of Winnie the Pooh retrospective over on my channel and Ben Saint on mm-hmm. YouTube and uh, I thought when you invited me on to do a movie podcast I thought hey what if crazy idea what if Pooh yeah that makes sense it. that's the story and well and it works well because it's like I think this is one of the earliest animated movies I remember from when I was a kid. I think I've seen it a bunch. I definitely saw it uh, a couple of times as a kid. I think I uh, had it on VHS. And uh, I didn't know this, but I learned from Wikipedia that it is a, um, a what do you call it? It's direct video It was not in theaters. Oh, it was? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure because... I didn't realize, because uh, it seems like movie quality... Although it is pretty short, it's only a hundred and no, it's only an hour seventeen minutes. Yeah, that's the one thing that seems direct to TV or uh, VHS or whatever. Other than that, I mean, the animation and everything is really, really pleasant. The background art is beautiful. Yeah, a lot about it is really fantastic in its appearance and its, it's presentation. Qu- it's quality. It's quality. It is quality. Um, it, yeah, it's a quality film. So. How did you... So as a kid, what did you think of this movie, if you recall that? As a kid, uh, I think I... Well, I think I liked it. Um, I don't think it was, like, my favorite poo or anything. Um, Mm -hmm. I liked the songs. I... They stuck... Like, I remembered a bunch of them, so they they made an impression on me. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it... The thing about... I mean, the thing about Pooh's Grand Adventure is that it's really like sad and dark and like yeah maudlin like really maudlin um i mean so i th- i think it's kind of a tough watch for a little kid um yeah it's it scared the crap out of me as a kid yeah the whole skull thing and like when they're uh, doing the song as though they're going off to war and like all the colors turn red and the weight of the universe is on Pooh's shoulders. I crap my pants as a kid. Do you, do you mean Owl's song? Stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the on the rewatch, Owl's song was the highlight of the whole. I loved that. It is so oh, it's funny. Great. It's so funny. Owl is such an asshole. <laughs> I okay. love it. He is it's... trolling them, right? He I, is trolling them. I I don't know. I don't. <laughs> wait. Do you wait? Do you think like he's just making it up? Like. I, so no, I think he is like... because because he spells. I think later there's like a moment when something he says about the word scholar school signals the fact that he is very well aware that he is just crap. Like he is just making crap up. No, no, I'm pretty sure. Because do do you remember when? (laughs) Um, okay. He says, because I think this is, this is fascinating. This is fascinating. I think the way he, okay. I think it's that on the map, he spells skull correctly. Oh, he does. Yeah. No. So how could that... oh no? How could he spell it correctly if he thought it spelt like school? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. He's just messing um, with them. Oh, oh god. 
this changes everything. No, that messed me up when I saw that he spelt it right. I'm like, what the, what is this? I mean, okay, I think you see the map a couple times, and I think it looks different each time, so I never really thought Mm. about it. But yeah, I think he points, I think he points to it, and yeah, yeah, I remember it does, it says S-K-U-L-L. Yeah, and I think like he knows. pays backwards he has or something. to know. Oh no, oh, yeah. I don't know what I, I don't know what to believe anymore. I, just, I know. I mean, he's <laughs> he puts them in mortal danger. Well, he doesn't actually, because like well, you know, yeah, spoilers yeah. at the at the end when they're walking back, all the all the things they passed on the way there that were scary and evil were actually just you know, nothing. Skull was That's just like true. a rock in a hill, <laughs> you know. Except like. Um, Except falling into the valley, no, because they, they, they like they walk over that happens. bridge and uh, you see it, you see it oh. again. They fall off it, but it's just like a two foot drop. Okay, it's good that you caught that. I caught all the other like reversals and changes, but for some reason I missed that one. So that's good. That yep, it's all it's all just uh, you know it's all fine. It was all fine. It was nothing. Uh, in the end, all it was perception. all it was nothing. Don't worry. But yeah, <laughs> I I mean. I think it's funny to imagine. I think it's funny if Owl does believe this is like a deadly, <clears throat> perilous adventure, and he really is just like, oh, how the how romantic! Oh, a journey into the unknown. Some of you may not come back. Oh, I wish I was going. Bye, bye, go away, bye. <laughs> no, he's uh, a funny guy. He's a great character. He is. Um, he's really good. I think he's my favorite in this movie. Um, his voice yeah. is not. He does. He, I looked it up. He doesn't have the same voice actor as he had in New Adventures, and I think it's worse. Oh, okay. I liked his old voice, um, but what can oh, you do? Yeah. Guy's probably dead. I look. I looked him probably. up, and like the pictures of the old actor, they're like, he's like a chubby. He's wearing like a boater hat and like a white suit, and he's like this like old like ruddy fat guy. He looks like he's like he looks like John Candy's dad or something. I'm sure he probably died like a <laughs> century ago. Uh, so, oh, you know, life life goes on. Yeah, they didn't have. They might have not had too many options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, the guy they replaced him with, his like his other credits are exclusively like there was like a, like, a Rainbow Bright movie. Uh, he was in the Tigger movie. You know, he he just does like Disney. Or I don't know if Rainbow Bright is a Disney thing, but he just does yeah. like he does voices in little kids 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 media. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Rabbit song is pretty good. Yeah, Rabbit Song is good. I thought that the first, I thought the stuff in the movie, mm-hmm. up until and including Owl's song, was yeah. pretty strong. Um, I, I liked all that stuff, mm-hmm. but after that, it kind of just kept going, and e- I felt the, that it was the, a bit the, like the, slow. I not guess. not much actually happens in the cave, right? Yeah, like. I, yeah, the the cave scene is a long. It's pretty long, and it it I don't know. It felt dragged out, and like there's a lot of I don't know. The whole scene where they're like, hmm, I ooh, could I could I actually try and figure out a solution to this problem? Uh, I guess I could try for for Pooh Bear. Oh, could could I actually bounce up a thing? I I guess I could try for for Pooh yeah. Bear. <laughs> And I mean, it, it, it goes sounds. On. It goes on. Yeah, and it sounds kind of dumb to complain about it mm-hmm. because it's like the the film is very specific with these are our messages. We're gonna run through these ideas from start to finish. Mm-hmm. There's not gonna be much else here, and the culmination of that is like in the cave. They all say, "Oh, I can do this now. I believe in myself." Basically, but mm-hmm. um, re rewatching it as an adult, I definitely felt that that simplicity was kind of boring oh and i remember even as a kid i found i think as a kid i even found that boring like i was never particularly fond of this movie i really liked some of the set pieces yeah and i loved the animation and the aesthetic of it i really enjoyed watching it for that stuff but the story i always thought was quite quite bland the story is pretty bland and the, those those words like the 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 arc words you know you're 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 braver than you oh, fuck you're braver than you believe you're stronger than you seem you're smarter than you think they say them yeah so often so like much. in so in the cave they're much. saying it like every couple of minutes 
Uh, and I don't really I think get with Christopher it Robbins, it, he even he doesn't even just he says it like twice. He repeats it twice yeah. in the first scene, I think, where he introduces it. And then it Yeah. They <laughs> I think it would have I think I think what they they could have just had like he says it once at the beginning and then Pooh spends the rest of the movie trying to remember it, and then he mm-hmm. remembers it at the very end. And it's after everyone else has learned these things, and then they're like, yeah, yeah I learned that that is true, actually. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. cause the repetitions of that idea and the hyper-focus on it... It's I so mean... focused. Like, yeah, it's 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 extreme. Yeah. It's extremely fixated on those phrases. Yeah, and I kind of... Some of the actual explorations of that were enjoyable to watch, but it kind of felt like getting bludgeoned with a brick sometimes. Yeah. Where I'm going... Like, I know... I know what you're going for. And I mean, sometimes people will look at that type of stuff and go, it's it's a kid's movie. So that yeah. makes sense. But I'm thinking of it even from a kid's perspective. The kid mm-hmm. doesn't care if it's repeated. You know? Yeah. yeah. That doesn't help them focus in on the themes. You know, the kids are there for the songs. And mm-hmm. you could um, get away with, I think you could get away yeah. with just saying it once at the beginning and once at the end and like sort of yeah. hinting at it. I think kids throughout. would get it. I think kids are yeah. smarter. Yeah. They're smarter, smarter than, than they, they seem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, oh, you speaking of smarter, I don't know. Th- why is Rabbit's thing that he doesn't think he's smart? Because like he definitely does yeah. think he's smart. Uh, was that weird to you? Yeah, no, it was weird to me. And there was a couple of things in the movie that that made that strange. I mean, some of it is is just a joke, and the film handles its characters in pretty weird ways, uh, such as with rabbit in the first scene when he's he's gardening he has i think it's like an almanac for yeah yeah growing this stuff by the book but then yeah but then he can't read yeah you, um, you know well okay actually this, which this, i don't b- really b- care about but. before we started recording i said that this movie shook my foundations of what i believed about everything i believed about the pooniverse and what i and specifically what i meant was rabbit reading i he yeah. he okay he can read, I think. I didn't think he could, but he kind of can because he can read the words on the map, and he's got the alm. He's got the alm. Yeah, he's got that almanac. But like, surely that's like a dry, like technical manual. Like, surely that's beyond his reading level because he can like mm-hmm. sort of read. Uh, like he, yeah. he he can't read the the note, but it's only because Pooh covered it in honey. Like he probably maybe could have deciphered it if it had been clean. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm not maybe. sure. I'm not sure. I, I, I wonder. Yeah. Rabbit's, I just, I rabbit's literacy is like, this is my white whale. I have to get to the bottom of like how literate is Rabbit. I, I'm happy that we both focused on it because it doesn't really matter, but it bothered me throughout the whole film. And I'm like, I am an idiot it, it for bo- caring this much about this. It, 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 bothers, <laughs> it bothers me too. Cause like, I have, you know, I've been watching the new adventures and like, okay, there's a scene where he writes for sale. He writes for sale on a sign and he hammers the sign in, but he uses the number four. Uh, there's a one, mm-hmm. he paints a sign that says like this way to honey. Like, like, and, and I think he spells it correctly. Um, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm leaning towards, he has like a kind of kindergartner, like basic, like grasp of the, of the written English language. That's, I think that's where yeah. I'm coming to, to settle on it. Like owl probably could read like an actual book. Owl is probably like, owl is probably like solid, solid fifth grade reading level. Um, <laughs> Al, Al is even more confusing though as we've established we don't know what to think about him no. I <laughs> I, can't... I wonder I think I think you've got a solid case here that Abbott just that Abbott that Owl just faked the whole thing just to fuck with them <laughs> no I think he I really because as soon as I thought saw it written right I went well I guess he's aware he yeah. just did this because he can. He says out loud, S-C-H-O-O-L, skull, but the map's... Yeah. And he, he wrote the map, right? Like, he, he draws it. Yeah. Yeah. Just takes advantage of these guys. Well, he's not he's not getting anything out of it. It's just <laughs> it's getting... sim- simple cruelty. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's just fun. <laughs> just is. fun for him. Yeah. I relate to it, though. I relate yeah. to his feelings. And he's like, um, oh, he's, oh, man, like... <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if he knows that they're gonna be they're gonna be running through the hundred acre wood into the great unknown, seeing seeing phantoms. You know, seeing this like thinking that th- they're 
falling into a into a thousand foot gorge. You know, oh, yeah. something that annoyed me uh, on the way there, they fall into that gorge, and like mm-hmm. there's a big build up, like oh no, I better not fall. Uh, but then they're just fine. They just land. Yeah, and they don't die. But it's okay because in the end, on the way when on the way back when they go over it again and you see that it's like a two foot drop, I'm like, huh, I guess. I guess it's all. I guess it's all explained. I guess they thought of everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was pretty cool. They, they did. They did it. That's that succeeded. Yeah, they they, they mm. thought it through. I mean, it's it's kind of weird because the film's themes are all uh, story wise. It's all that it really has going for it. Mm-hmm. But the themes are exceptionally simple. Yeah, I think even they for are. a kid, they really are. Um, just believe in yourself. Yeah, just believe, just believe. And I mean, there are some hints of of deeper ideas in here that are quite mm-hmm. morbid and quite Do you mean very like very sad uh, actually? Do you like mean, the like, disappearance of childhood and stuff? Yeah. Uh, it's in there. It's it's in here. At the beginning and the end, you know, they talk about forever and it's like, "Oh god, yeah, mm-hmm. what about when he grows up?" Um, but uh yeah, they don't really it, in it's they don't worry about that so much. It's just, oh, he's going to school now. He's going to school now. Yeah, um, and I would have... It's kind of weird because it seems like the film's going to focus on that idea of, like, temporality and death because Skull. I mean, like, yeah. you go to school where you grow up and you're thrust into society, into Ooh. the system, and your imagination is inhibited, oh and my. that is death Man. of childhood. Yeah, like, 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 school as... You know, school is school as death of childhood, as as yeah. like metaphor for like overall for like general death, i.e. skull. Cool. Yeah. Cool, Th- man. That's what I saw in it, but it doesn't really like play with that much beyond that it's kind of there if I want to talk no, about it. I think skull is just cause it's scary. That's pretty yeah. much all that's pretty much all skull has going for it. Yeah. Yeah, so skull it, is I, nothing. I saw... Skullosaurus is nothing. Yeah, none of like the None of the obstacles really have any like any like thematic weight to them other than to be obstacles for them to overcome by believing in their abilities. I think that's part of it too. It might have been good to have something kind of overarching with it as far as those set pieces and dangers are concerned. I mean, I guess Christopher Robin's words are there. Mm-hmm. Um but Perhaps something a little bit stronger. Always be with you. Okay, it's not always be with you. That was it was yeah. That was creepy. It's really creepy. Like it's creepy when he when he he even in the beginning scene he's on the tree he says I'll always be with you and then this isn't even like a memory. Pooh's he like leans in close to Pooh and he like whispers in like always always be like he actually does that. That's not just like Pooh's half remembered thing. (laughs) I don't know. He's uh, modeling sweet so nothing in Pooh Bear's like, ear. Like, Pooh, Pooh, like the very next day, like the first thing, he goes out and he, he looks for Christopher Robin and he doesn't see him at the tree. And he immediately is like, he's gone. Like, Christopher Robin's mm-hmm. gone. I can't find him. P- Piglet, what do I do? Uh, mm-hmm. Surely there have been days where Christopher Robin didn't come to the Hundred Acre Wood. Surely this is not like a... But surely it's not like clockwork. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, the fear is real, man. The fear is real. The fear is He's, real. And maybe instant. he does this every time Christopher Robin isn't there, but this is the first time it's amounted to anything, right? Yeah. This is the first time he left a note, which turned out to be a disaster because it was just what Owl yes. need, needed to wreak his revenge on all of his supposed friends. <laughs> Just, just messing with them for no reason. He's just like, um, yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go through the demon rock, and you you gotta go through the death mountains, yeah. and you gotta go through the dragon hole, and yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay. Now talking about the tree, you reminded me. Yeah. Yeah. As far as like metaphors of death are concerned, you know, the whole idea of fall and like the tree is kind of it's crumbling away in a way. Oh it, yeah. You know? Yeah. But. But again, it doesn't really do much with those other than that they're there. You're right. Um, yeah, that could like easily it... have been another... That could easily like reinforce the theme of like time marches on, nothing lasts forever. Yeah, but... which which it kind of seems like it wants to toy with, which almost makes me wonder if somebody thought that was too dark and forced them to change it. You know what? I... It 
the 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 I feel like like there's there's so little going on. The, like the themes, the theme, the actual themes, the movie, like the text of the movie presents are so bare bones. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I don't think the production team could have failed to notice that like this theme of impermanence and death is there. But yeah, yeah I think you ha- it's ha- they have to have been like we don't want to go there. It's too much. It's yeah. already dark enough, which it is. Like it's yeah. it's already pr- a pretty dark movie. It's also visually dark. Like oh know, yeah, like, everyone. Everyone's palette is like dark. Like Piglet looks just like even in like the bright sunlight when he's being picked up by the by the butterflies. Like he's just he's just dark. He's like a muddy dark color. It, mm-hmm. I know I noticed it throughout. Like just the palette is dark too. For some reason. yeah, they really they really lean into it. And like as much as I'm bitching about the movie, there is something to it that like the the imagery from this movie is embedded in my mind. It, mm-hmm. it's there uh like the the owl a, song i watched that and i just yeah. remembered it i i remembered oh, sure. it extremely well and i remembered some of like the shadows moving around in the skull coming towards them weirdly well as well and and not many what movies I, I don't remember many movies like what did, that what did, what did i remember i mean i i remembered most i didn't remember owl's song at all it was a treat it was a real delight uh seeing mm-hmm. that again uh, what did I remember? I remember all the the scenes in the in the the cave, uh, the mine cart. Um, I remember, yeah, I remember. Hit hit Pooh sitting in the Pooh sitting in like the weird like crystal cavern, like just accepting <laughs> death and oblivion. Yeah, uh, it was, which is cool. No, yeah, them- thematically, this movie builds to all the characters you know and love. Like the natural end of this is they die. Yeah. Um th- yeah. That, if that happened, this movie would be legendary. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, like this is just the last this is just the last Pooh story and like Pooh never come Pooh never comes back from yeah. from Skull. Well, honestly, like in my mind the end of this movie that I kind of envisioned for it if they could do what they wanted would be that Christopher Robin says to Pooh at the end like it doesn't last forever, Pooh, but, you know, it's still important. Yeah. And then you get, like, a brief little thing of, like, him sitting at, like, an actual school desk doing work, and then it just fades to black. And then um, sequel, the sequel is uh, the Christopher Robin movie, which I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen that have either. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, people have been telling me to see it. I am very skeptical, but uh, mm-hmm. I've heard that it's... I've, I've had it recommended. I've heard that it's not as bad as I think it <laughs> has to be. But uh, who who knows? Yeah, he's sort of Christopher Robin's sort of you know he he says like you know will you be here even when I'm a hundred? Which is like, uh, it's sort of skirting. It's sort of brushing up against mm-hmm. the mortality impermanence thing, but not really. Yeah. It doesn't go there. Uh, it's a shame. Yeah. Cowards. Yeah, it is, cowards. It is a shame. All of them. Yeah, <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> I mean uh, we're we're complaining about damn it the disney you just things. gotta take Pooh out behind the shed and put a gun to his head and blow his brains out already it's the only thing that makes me feel anything you gotta fucking kill my <laughs> beloved characters well, to make me feel they, disney to be fair they made the hunchback of notre dame which is just w- what possessed them to make that so i have actually have never it. i have actually never watched hunchback of notre dame but i know that it's dark as hell and has an yeah. evil priest who i relate to uh quite a bit oh yeah yeah <laughs> no it's it's i watched it i didn't recall it at all from when i was a kid if i did see it and i watched it again and like there's this whole scene of the priest lusting after yeah this gypsy and i think it's a gypsy and singing about hellfire as, as, and how his lustful desires will like consume him and destroy his soul, but he doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. He's oh god, what what does he say? He's like, um Oh, he says uh like he's he's like singing into the fire and he's like in, like if smoke is like forming visions of Esmeralda and he's like Yeah and he's like I'm going he's like I'm going to like forcibly marry Esmeralda. If she won't do it, I'll kill her. And I th- I yeah. remember the line from the song, he's like, It's not my fault if in God's plan he made the devil so much stronger than a man. He's like, I'm gonna do oh, this yeah. evil thing. I can't help <laughs> it's myself. Amazing. It's God's fault that he made me so weak that I have to do this evil thing. It's fucking I love awesome. That movie. 
I love how weird and strange it is that that movie exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me see. I got notes. I got notes. Okay, nice. Oh, they, yeah, yeah. I actually have a couple other things to talk about with the movie. So they do they do think... I, I think I must have, like, blinked and missed it or something. Uh, they apparently they think Pooh is dead. They... they they think he they think he gets eaten by the skullosaurus. I don't I wasn't yeah. clear exactly when that happened, but maybe they like ran mm-hmm. away. I think it was maybe is it when they see him in the crystal and then they run away and he's not there and yeah. they just assume that the skullosaurus got him? Okay. Yeah. Uh fair, I guess. And then yeah, and then and then later they're like, "Oh, may I'm not I'm not strong, but maybe I could be strong for for Pooh Bear." I think I already mentioned that this scene goes on for way too yeah. long. I get. Oh, yeah, I mean, I get that they think he's dead. I get they, but man, that's pretty dark. They think he's dead. Yeah, they think Pooh's dead. <laughs> and then Christopher Robin doesn't even blink. Piglet's like Skullosaurus yeah. gobbled him up, and he's like, "Huh? What? What are you talking about?" He's like, "Piglet, you little bitch, don't tell lies." <laughs> he's like you, like are you, what? Are you, just you need to you need to get your head on straight. You need to you need to you need to figure it out. You need to figure your shit out, Piglet. <laughs> I'm sick of it. He really does, though. He really <laughs> does. <laughs> He does. Um, this movie. This movie doubles down on. Here, here's the thing. I think I don't like. It, it doubles down on the characters' flaws as flaws and as like things that mm-hmm. need to be overcome. In yeah. the show, a lot. It's like or in, like these characters' quirks are not like problems. They're just like quirky mannerisms. Like oh yeah, Tigger's a Tigger's goofy. You know, mm-hmm. Rabbit is is uh, uh, what's the word um. A- anxious uh um whatever uh fu- he's like kind of obsessive and yeah obsessive obsessive is the word you know piglet is yeah. a is a scaredy cat these aren't yeah. like the le- the the point is not let's teach them a lesson so they won't be those things anymore it's just you know this is just this is just how they are mm-hmm. um yeah you know why is the lesson that they're trying why does rabbit need to learn that he's smart they, like I feel like the story kind of twists itself into knots, trying to justify that Rabbit needs to learn that he's smart and Tigger needs to learn that he's strong. Tigger, yes, Tigger already thinks he's the strongest, coolest guy. Rabbit thinks he knows everything. It's that's it's, that's yeah. part of what I didn't get about the conflicts is even I don't know as much about the Winnie the Pooh stuff as you do, but even from what I know, I know that Rabbit's yeah. thing is that Rabbit thinks he's smart and Tigger yeah. thinks that he is extremely competent and thus you know acts yeah, somewhat think rashly every, and recklessly everything he does everything he does that's what tiggers do best he's really he's good at everything uh is what yeah. he, is his thing he has to okay so in tiggers case they have they sort of like uh what is it they just they have him like fail they have him fail at like one thing and then he's mm-hmm. like oh i can't do it anymore i can't bounce i'm a bad bouncer yeah. uh which i don't know i whatever sure uh, he's got he's got to get I his guess. mojo back. Rabbit though, they have like yeah the whole thing about the almanac. At, I think this is interesting actually. The, the the almanac at the beginning, he's like guard I garden by the book, and then he sings mm-hmm. the song about the map, and he's like you gotta trust the map. You gotta trust the it's it's not what you think till it, mm-hmm. it till it's printed in ink. If it says so, so it is. Um, mm-hmm. It's an interesting. I mean, I do think. I do think that Rabbit Wood is a by, by the book kind of guy who probably would trust the word of a book over his own senses. But then he goes yeah. so far as to be like, you know, he says, oh, don't trust your, your tummy. Don't trust your toes. Don't trust your brain. Haven't had a use for mine in years, which is a really funny line. It made me laugh. Yeah. But yeah. Rabbit, <laughs> Rabbit uses his brain. Rabbit, I don't know. It's a, it's a, well, that, it's a unusual take well, on, it's weird. on Rabbit. Well, it's weird. Yeah, because had because the a film use for mine in years. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, because the the film makes it seem as though Rabbit's central character flaw, if we're gonna call it a flaw, is, is that, that he can't think for himself. Yeah, and that or, he's so by what, what, the book. What were you gonna say? Yeah, yeah that, that he's book. so by the book that unless there is a plan, he he is not mm-hmm. willing to deviate. He's not willing to go with his gut. He's not willing to try anything new. He's not willing to chart his own course. Which mm. is like a fair enough thing to explore with a character. Yeah, but F- fair enough. Me, but it's weird to yeah. say that. Oh, it's because he doesn't think he's smart. He yeah, thinks no, he, that doesn't seem right. He thinks he's being smart by following the the letter of yeah. the law, as it were. Well, you know, I might be wrong here. Maybe based on the other, 
like new adventures uh you you would be able to tell me if this is correct but Uh it seems to me like he's the type that wouldn't necessarily follow the book if he thought his idea was better than the books yeah 100 100 percent if if he he would yeah he would uh Mm -hmm. if he had if he had an idea in his head of how to do something and someone showed him a a book being like but rabbit the book says you should do it like this he would absolutely be like what does this stupid book know you know i'm i i I, i'm i'm a i'm a i'm a cool guy yeah Yeah. you're 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 totally i totally agree with that yeah, so it almost twists it's almost twists the characters. I I, I would say if he if he that. if a book contradicted him, he would not trust the book. He would he would he would degrade he would deride the book. But if if he got his information from the book originally, yeah, he would probably mm-hmm. be like, no 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 no, this you know I read it in this book, so yeah. it's, you know so I know I know what's up because I you know oh, you yeah. know that, I think that, it, that makes it, sense. It cuts both ways. Um, it's not yeah, I he he would be a bi- yeah. I think I think I've made. My point here. No, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. I get what you mean. And I guess that speaks to how, other than with Piglet, because Piglet's problem is always that he's a scaredy cat. Um, mm-hmm. It feels also like a cry the film baby. kind of... Sorry? Oh, crybaby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. Sometimes, you for... uh, Sometimes they forget. Piglet is like... Yeah, they forget. <laughs> Piglet only al- is like... Boy. Nobody actually nobody actually cries in this movie, which is a little surprising considering the tone throughout. Um, yeah, Piglet, Piglet, think com- Piglet, I think Piglet would, comes like, close down. once or twice, but Piglet's always Piglet's always like on the verge of tears over nothing. It's very it's very obnoxious. Hmm. Well, and that's I, I don't know. It it seems to me with Pooh, hmm. and actually with all the characters other than Piglet, there are weird things done. To twist the characters so that there can be a character conflict. And yeah. some of them are more minor than others. Like Pooh Bear, as you said, he very quickly goes like, where is Christopher Robin? Something's not right. But to me, he seems like a pretty complacent guy. He doesn't yes. seem like overly concerned. But this has changed so that he is prompted to go on this adventure. And then Tigger is normally so brave and uh, jovial and over the top but that is taken from him so that he can regain it and Rabbit's whole thing that we just talked about and even something minor like Eeyore decided to go on this adventure why? I was I was gonna mention Eeyore it's like why is Eeyore here like he doesn't yeah. one it doesn't make sense yeah man I okay I agree with everything you just said I want to go through point by point uh, Tigger <laughs> I, I think I get Tigger like I can see Tigger Tigger is the kind of person who could have his confidence shaken by failing oh, okay. to do something he thought he could do. I I, I can believe that. But yeah, mm-hmm. Pooh would not panic. At, at yeah. like Pooh is a complacent guy. If Christopher Robin didn't show up for a while, he'd probably I mean Pooh's got Pooh's got shit to do. Pooh Pooh's mm-hmm. gathering honey. You know, he's doing his his thing. Uh <laughs> mm-hmm. I no, I don't think he would like one day he doesn't see Pooh he he doesn't see Christopher Robin at the tree and he's like oh Piglet help he's gone what uh yeah no I mean I he's, guess Christopher yeah. Robin's words the previous day even if he doesn't remember them were quite ominous so maybe that would yeah prompt him to be a yeah bit more maybe worried. maybe okay yeah okay we can give you that I one. guess I uh, guess but Eeyore yeah, why would he go? <laughs> why is he here? I mean, I'm sure that Eeyore likes Christopher Robin, wants Christopher wants to see Christopher Robin again. Yeah. Um, but he they wouldn't even believe in- that he could help. He definitely wouldn't believe that he could help. Do they even like invite him or does he just like go? I think he's just there with them and D- does, does I don't anyone, know to me like to me if any character should have changed over the course of this adventure it's him because you know, this is a big deal for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He imagine if different. Well, this would be. I mean, there are other other there are episodes like with the same thing that I'm about to describe. But like different concept is the movie is about Eeyore, and they're mm-hmm. going on they're going on this quest, and on the quest there's all these obstacles, and each of the main you know Pooh, Piglet, Tigger, Rabbit, they each bring something to the table that lets them traverse an obstacle. 
while mm-hmm. you know Eeyore offers nothing, and he feels like, oh, why did I even come on this quest? I'm a stupid yeah. donkey, and I live in a pile of sticks. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, and then he the home looks like mine does, <laughs> and he he, pro- he pro- but he figures something out, and he proves himself in the end, or or whatever. You yeah, know, that would have been a better arc, I think. I yeah, I mean, that would have made more sense. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like that would. I guess part of the problem is like it almost feels that having these characters address their problems corrupts something about the very nature of them that makes them appealing. Like having Eeyore not be cripplingly depressed <laughs> kind of, he's not, kind of ruins well, it. Well, no, he is. He is cripplingly depressed. Some, he's not always, but yeah, no, he's cripplingly depressed. <laughs> and he's pretty sad. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. pretty upset. Uh, I think there's times, I think it's implied in other stories that, like, a lot of the time he just looks sad, but he's not actually. Mm-hmm. But then other oh, okay. times he is like, oh, of course, no one invited me to the party. Why time would to put they? the gun to my head <laughs> and finally pull the trigger. The curtains are going down. And I know, I know <laughs> you've let me down. <laughs> I've been a fool to myself. <laughs> Dude, Eeyore's a big anime fan. Big anime fan. If anybody tries to tell me that isn't canon, I will find them. <laughs> he loves anime. Eeyore he loves, loves anime. It. He loves it. Well, I mean, somebody somebody commented once saying that I sounded like Eeyore, who had woke mm. up on slightly the right side of the bed this morning. And I laughed my ass <laughs> off at that, so maybe, you know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It's reaching. I don't know, man. It's reaching. Listen, Eeyore's my boy. I love Eeyore. I agree he's my favorite. Reaching. I love um, him, too. He's, um, but, okay, e- time for e- time for more Eeyore gripes. Uh, at the mm-hmm. very end, they're like, okay, so it's already annoying that they've been saying the arc words uh, enough times. Rabbit, yep. hey, I learned I'm smart. Tigger, I learned I'm strong. Piglet, I learned I'm brave. Eeyore, mm-hmm. didn't have to come all this way. Just had it inside <laughs> you all along. Shut up, Eeyore. Just shut up. <laughs> Just cut no, that shit out. When did Eeyore out. become like the wise sage of the group? When oh, did that become his role? Oh, no, no, no. He he is that in other episodes. In, in, okay. in, New, Adve- in New Adventures, he does that a bunch. But this okay. time, he's just being, he's just being like, like, yeah, Eeyore, we get bitch. it. Yeah. Yeah, they know. They already learned the lesson. They've figured out it was inside them all along. You, you mm-hmm. don't need to chime in. Go, why Why are you here? Go home. But the other thing that's great is everyone else is like, the Christopher Robin's there. Piglet's like, oh, Christopher Robin. Eeyore, oh, Christopher Robin. Tigger, hoo-hoo, Christopher Robin. Eeyore, hello. <laughs> He's like, it's like, does he... How invested in this quest was he, really? Like, he's not he even cares. that... He's not even that jazz. He's probably he's my, my he, favorite he's of my the characters. He's, de- like he's definitely my favorite. No, in in um in the new adventures, like, there's there's an episode where Tigger loses his stripes and everyone else thinks that he can't be Tigger because Tiggers have stripes, but Eeyore, like, every time Eeyore sees him, he's just like, hey, Tigger. And Tigger's like, why do you keep calling me Tigger? I can't be Tigger. I don't have stripes. And Eeyore's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Um, oh, that's so nice! It's really good. Yeah, it's, that's that's glorious. a good, that's a good Eeyore. There's one where, um, there's one where uh, Piglet sees Eeyore sitting on a hill and thinks he looks sad, <laughs> so everyone tries to cheer him up. But in the end, he's like, "Hey, Eeyore, sorry we couldn't cheer you up." And Eeyore's like, "Piglet, I don't come up here because I'm sad. I come up here because I'm happy." And then they watch the clouds, and there's like magical cloud fireworks. It's cool. Oh, okay. So this is I feel okay. This is actually telling me what I think. Uh, maybe the show does well that the mm-hmm. movie tries to change, which is that it takes these these character flaws or seemingly flaws, these quirks, and sometimes they're bad things, and other times they're really good things. Like Eeyore being really, um, I guess I don't want to use apathetic; that feels too strong, but that's the only word I can think of right now about stuff mm-hmm. becomes him not caring that Tigger doesn't have his stripes. You know, that's a positive thing that comes from something that we might initially view as negative um yeah yeah which is which that's kind of cool it's cool to take these these character traits and have them be you know good things too and 
I really like that message of just because your friend like looks a bit sad doesn't mean that they're that sad or anything, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So that's um, neat. Like in the end, you know, Pig- Piglet just listens to him and hears him out and, and learns what the other characters didn't learn uh, mm-hmm. he had that he had to say. Um, yeah, you know, I like the idea. I think I like the idea of a story about how someone's, you know, quote unquote flaws can be strengths Mm -hmm. better than a story about learning how to, you know, overcome your flaws. I mean, not that either one is bad, yeah. but the, the idea of the first one appeals to me more, um, be- yeah or like know. a mixture of both maybe could work well yeah like um, people you know people conjunction. don't people don't people who are scared d cats don't just like they don't just become brave right like mm-hmm. people just ha- some people some people just have traits that they have and you that you yeah. can you know you can learn to you can learn to work around them you can learn that you can learn that you can overcome them when you need to but you 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 can't I think in a lot of cases you can't you can't just learn a lesson and then stop being a coward or stop being, no. you know, weak or stupid or whatever you are. But you can you can succeed in spite of them. You can sometimes use them to succeed if you well, yeah. you know and like you can, go you about can it the slowly right way. change it. Uh it's yeah. pretty rare to have a genuine epiphany in real life and go, you know, from this moment I understand that mm-hmm. this is how I am and I need to change that and it's gonna work. No, that doesn't it's pretty rare that that happens. Um, I, I I guess what they learn, I guess what they learn in this is like it's not like Pigger sto- Pigger Piglet stops being you know mm-hmm. scared of stuff. He just he learns that he can be brave, and you know that's good. That's a good point. That is a and difference. Le- and that's a better and, message. Yeah, that's and Tigger learns that he. I see. I I think the phrase I don't like the phrasing of this one. Stronger than you seem. Uh, it's sort of insulting. He's like, hey, Christopher, I learned that I'm stronger than I seem because I know I look, you know, weak. I look I look just like nothing. Which is weird because uh, Tigger but, doesn't. But I'm not. Tigger wouldn't think he does. No. No, no, no. He would. Oh. Yeah. Tigger thinks he's the man. <laughs> Tigger, Tigger thinks, thinks he's the he's man. He's every other. Yeah, he is a Chad. He is a total Chad. Um, yeah. The Chad, the Chad Tigger versus the, the virgin rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, <laughs> somebody, somebody draw that. Somebody draw that, please. Please. It's one hundred percent true. Um, <laughs> uh, That's we could probably pair them off. We got, we got, we got Chad Owl versus Virgin Eeyore. You know, Ch- Chad Owl. You know, um, um, fucks with his friends Eeyore's... by sending them on a fake quest. Virgin Eeyore goes along on that quest, does nothing, doesn't even well, care about the, the whole result, thing with Eeyore. Finding the... I feel like he is, you know, I think in bed, Eeyore would be a monster. Like, I don't think, <laughs> oh, God. Because, you know, he's playing, he's yeah. playing pin the tail in the donkey. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> oh. And on that note, I think that's where we're going to wrap the podcast up. That's that. <laughs> Uh. Oh, okay. Man. All right. But, well, you got um, me. <laughs> other I got nothing. A, I got nothing. Another for that. positive. Another yeah. positive note I have. Um that I'm I keep almost forgetting is I I really like how the the movie uses music. Um yeah, I I liked like, the songs the I, even as a kid. Um yeah. I did. They're good. Yeah. They're a little sentimental, you know, Pooh's mm-hmm. the first song Pooh sings and then the one about how he can't find Christopher Robin. They're very sentimental, mm-hmm. but they're good. And the second one, the one where he's he's like wishing on a star or whatever. I'm like I'm I'm listening to it. I'm rolling my eyes. I'm like, oh god. But at the same yeah. time, uh, it's it worked. Like I'm. But then like I was like, oh no, oh but it's working. Oh but I'm actually really sad. Oh yeah. but I'm actually getting yeah. the getting the the, the tinglys. Like ah damn it, fuck it, it got me. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you know it, it's thumbs up, I guess. No, I I agree because it's I, I like the song c- songs quite a bit, um, mm-hmm. and then I also just like how they use uh, music to make the world feel more alive and to accentuate little things. Like for example, 
uh, ra- rabbits slipping all over the acorns. And as they fly across the screen, you get these little flourishes of music going each time some of them soar across. And um, mm. when a character like lands on their ass when they slip, it'll do like a little like boom, boom, boom. Who each has... time that they fall. Yeah, who has really good music? Like the new adventures had a really good soundtrack. Uh, I I think I don't think I heard any of like the old that music. And this is I, I guess this m- movie probably had like a new score. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, the mu- the background music and like the foley art is really is really yes. good. Uh, the Hundred Acre Woods really feels like a lush a lush yeah. living place. It's pretty it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think um, I really like yeah. that part of this. The the movie feels alive aesthetically. I think the mu- movie is gorgeous. I love yeah how it looks it and is. feels and the way it uses the music. I don't know it bre- it breathes life into it in a way that after I was watched it, I went like, I wish more animated things did this because uh, it mm. it works really well. It, it's really cool. It's to all have that. it's all. Yeah, it's all very, it's all very lush. It's all very like, it's all very storybook. You know, it's all like, like it, it's it it looks like, you know, it's you got you got ink. It's all it's like it's drawn in ink, but like it's like it's like painted. I don't know if it's watercolored or or what. Um, this feels very warm. You know, it feels very warm and and tactile, but also just a little. Just a little whimsical, just a touch of whimsy. Oh yeah, that's a good word for it. That's a good word for it. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, Yeah. very, very bright. The exteriors are all very detailed and and bright and just warm and nice. And it's like you're a bug in a rug. (laughs) That's yeah. That's why I was kind of surprised that it was made straight for. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the video you would never if you were just watching it. Like it doesn't look like okay. I. As a kid, I you know I I I, I liked Aladdin, and I liked the mm-hmm. sequel, um, Return of Jafar, and I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, Aladdin and Return of Jafar are good movies. They're good. Yeah. They're similar. And then as an adult, I saw Return of Jafar. I saw how it looks, and I was like, <laughs> oh my god, there is this is night and day. This is like, this had like a twelfth of the budget <laughs> that oh, that, well, that yeah. Aladdin had. This looks like trash in comparison. Uh yeah. and this isn't and I think I think Return of Jafar was direct to video. Um Probably. this is not this is not like that. This looks like a it was in theaters. You know, this looks as good as probably as the Tigger movie or that other Winnie the Pooh one that came out a few years ago. Yeah, yeah like, I think it does. It it looks really good and uh yeah, I guess this was just when they were doing lots of direct to home video things cuz I remember like I, like I had uh this the Lion King sequel uh which I always forget even exists. I always forget that's a thing. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of Lion King sequels. Yeah. They got a they made a new TV show about like his cuz his nephew or something. I don't oh, know. Kimba the White Lion? <laughs> yeah. Simba. Simba's like nephew and there's like oh, a yeah. cheetah and like a a stinky porcupine or a skunk or something oh yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> all the goods what more could a kid people. ask for <laughs> the sequel to it is called over the hedge uh, yeah 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 good. um shared shared universe yeah and uh, shark tale oh jeez i've never seen i've never seen either of those actually don't but i don't? don't okay well under the over the hedge i can't remember but shark tail is it's a strange beast it's a strange beast i've seen um i've seen big joel's videos about both of them do you listen to big joel i've seen big joel's video on shark tail and i i really i really like his stuff i like him a lot yeah same same i i, I re-listen uh very very often yeah big joel's oh great. i love how unabashedly he just like Loves I love Shrek. how unabashedly he looks so deeply into these things and just does not care if anybody could ever say like you overthought that because it's like yeah well, that's, that's what he's that's what he's here to do man yeah. that's what he's here for <laughs> that's the he's service here. he provides oh well, deep dive into Shark Tale you know deep deep yeah deep di- god deep dive into Shark Tale and he does it he, he does it well he fucking does it man ah, he pulls it so out good go watch Big Joel <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love Big Joel. Um, 
I think the last note here. Um, oh, wait, I got two more notes that mm. I want to complain about. Well, one's a complaint. Uh, Christopher okay. Robin's accent. Uh, I don't yeah, like it that? because he didn't have it. Okay. I get that he's English. I get that mm-hmm. he's English. Actually, you know, I'm probably wrong about this. I probably should be complaining that he doesn't have an accent in the show. And he probably mm-hmm. should have all along. But I don't care about that. All I care about is that it changed. And I don't like the change. And if it was a change in voice actor, I would understand that. I don't mind that they have a new voice actor for Owl. But, like, mm-hmm. his accent feels so... it. It's thick enough that it almost feels like an American faking a British accent. It could be for all. I, I don't know that it is. Yeah. But it sounds I, something like. Something about it was off putting. It sounds. Okay. Oh, I'm really glad that I wasn't the only one. It yeah. sounds like. It sounds like. Oh, who's. What is his name? Tyrion Lannister. Um, oh, Peter Dinklage. Peter Dink. Okay. Nobody. I feel like no one agrees with me on this. Peter Dinklage's accent in Game of Thrones sounds really fake. And it oh, really, my and it, gosh, you, I, yeah. I am so happy. No one has ever agreed with yeah. me okay, about that. Okay, good. I can't I hate stand it. it. He's a he's a really good actor, but his accent is, it's just not up to snuff. It's just, it's just 99% there, but I can really hear that 1%. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I always thought it was just the other me. Ones I are thought fine. I was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. But- you know, it's it, it anyway. The point, is, yeah. Christopher Robin kind of sounds like an American faking a British accent. It's thick to that point. It's annoying. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I don't like that they gave him an accent when he didn't have one before. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, also, I really thought the narrator was David Bowie for a second there, uh, but it wasn't. <laughs> uh, it's Aww, just. That's did sad. you did you think that? I don't know. Sound no, like I didn't. Bowie. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. But now that you say it, I could definitely see like hearing the voice and going, "Oh, David Bowie." Yeah. No, it's not. It's another guy who I think is another. It's it's a name I don't remember off the top of my head. It's a name I've heard before. I think he does a lot of narration mm. stuff in movies, but it's it's not Bowie, so you know. Yeah, I mean, I Ooh. liked the narrator's <laughs> voice. It was good. Yeah, um, it's nice. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a kind of enjoyable film. Uh, as far huh. as looks and aesthetic and presentation yeah. and music are concerned, uh, but if you're like going in for it into it for any sort of like high quality can't wait to hang with Pooh in the gang yeah it's no. yeah i i wonder do you i wonder why it was direct to video because it i mean they could have just made it a little longer and put it in theaters do you think I, that like they didn't want to release it in theaters for some reason what year i'm gonna look up what year this came out i can't remember exactly 97 the year. 97 97 um I don't know if you would have any inkling of this, but was that when they were releasing all of those, uh, all those d- direct like sequels uh, that I were don't, really bad? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, just because I'm wondering, I mean, like maybe this were... was more when they were trying to keep up the brand and really, really, really caring about that. And they felt this film in the end wasn't up to snuff for like a full theater release or something. I, I think, I mean, I'm no, I'm no industry insider, but Mm -hmm. I think if they wanted to like, I think when you make a movie, the best case scenario is you want it to release in theaters. Yeah. They could have done it if they wanted to, there must have been a reason why, they didn't and like i don't know was Pooh just not a hot property at that point i don't think so i think Pooh has been a hot property like as long as it's existed like i don't think Pooh has ever like stopped being a thing that people like it can't no, yeah, be, i think it, it's always been like yeah, a. a milne's stories even are just they're they're yeah. so well known yeah it was um, huge did you know that Pooh was so huge even like in his lifetime that like it like ruined the real life christopher robin's life oh it did yeah, like kids knew, uh, like when Christopher Robin was young, like other kids knew that, oh, you're the boy from Winnie the Pooh and they made fun Ooh. of him for it. Oh, they made fun of, oh man. And Christopher Robin as an adult, he like, you know, honestly, I kind of think he was being a little bitch about this. <laughs> I, I kind of think he, he he wrote books about like what it was like growing up oh, no. uh, as being the Pooh kid. And he like, 
complaint. He was like, uh, because my because my dad made me famous as a child, you know, I was under that shadow my whole life. I never got a chance I never got a chance to be anything greater of my own. Like, shut up. Uh, 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 bah, bah. My dad what? was really famous. Shut up. Couldn't he have just like Okay, whenever I hear stuff of that sort, and I mean this is me, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty and all that jazz, but I kind of go like, if it was that troublesome, why didn't you change your name as soon as you could? Then the problem would just be gone. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't complain about like, oh, having, being famous as Christopher Robin ruined my life as you're like publishing a book about it and like selling that book. Yeah, it feels Bullshit. weird. Yeah. Yeah. I, it I don't doesn't like feel it. like it's necessary. It feels like there, there were, it feels like there were ways around this that as a kid, I don't blame this guy for not thinking yeah of. but as he yeah. got older he should have been like okay you know what i know this isn't working out for me i don't like it i'm gonna go change my name right away uh i think that's what yeah you, you you can't i don't think it, i i'm not ready to sympathize because this, this is because this is because this is an opportunity right being christopher yeah. robin meant one his family was rich Two, that's true he had this book he had this opportunity like to write a book and of course it was going to be a bestseller you that's know true. like it's great like it would be great um and but he he didn't like it didn't get along with his dad later in life uh you know Dang. anyway i just thought that was interesting no that that's an interesting uh, fact i, found, I, I, didn't, I, found, I or, found that out yeah, an interesting fact found that out on youtube of all places on youtube watching youtube videos you can learn Shameful, things on youtube yeah yeah <laughs> when i'm when i'm at my lowest point sometimes i <laughs> sometimes i in- indulge <laughs> when i'm when i'm re- when i'm ready to scrape the bottom of the barrel when i'm ready to scrape the bottom of the barrel i look up some videos on teen titans and just <laughs> cry <laughs> oh man no i uh I love those Teen Titans videos. Oh, I was so glad. Him. I was like, oh man, someone's talking about Teen Titans. I remember Teen Titans. Yeah, I love that shit. Love that as a yeah. kid. Was it good? I don't know. I'm not <laughs> I'm certainly not, I'm certainly not gonna watch it again and find out. Yeah, I think that's why that worked out so well. I didn't Yeah. I mean I yeah. was hoping it would work out well. I thought it could do pretty well, but I was pleasantly surprised. I, mean, I, saw, it, like, I saw that. Really I saw that recommended and I was like, that that's that's a video for me right there. I'm, oh, I'm clicking man. that. I'm clicking that 100. Oh, percent I can't. Man. I can't click it fast enough. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! That yeah, makes me a happy stuff. boy. Oh um, God. I guess. Canadian. I guess we're basically at the point of wrapping this up. You know. You know. I really hate how they changed Low Art's voice. You know. I really. They gave him this <laughs> thick Canadian accent. It sounds like an American faking one. To be honest, I don't. Um, I just don't buy it. Listen there. I uh. I can't even do the stereotypical uh, Canadian uh, thro- accent. Yeah, uh, throw throw me down the stairs, my shoes. Well, okay. How are we, so I, I mean, we're how, how are we feeling about how are we feeling about Christopher Search for Christopher Robin? The, the overall, the, the I'm giving adventure. this bad boy a slight thumbs down. Yeah, uh, slight. You know, not not horrible or anything, but you it's know, it's got I, redeeming okay. qualities to it. Like there is value here. Mm-hmm. Do I recommend it? Gonna say no, unless you're just a big Pooh fan and you just want to see what's like. I haven't seen the Tigger movie, but I want to because it's yeah. a Winnie the Pooh movie, and I want to see what's going on with it. Yeah. Also, I hear it's really good. But that aside, I would, you know, want to see it anyway. I would recommend it to Pooh fans. Just like check it out. What do you think? It's interesting. See what they did. Do you agree? Do you agree with uh, how, what they did with Rabbit's character and making him too by the book to think for himself? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell. Uh, but oh, um, he's doing yeah. it better than I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ring that, ring that bell, ring that bell. Um, uh, so yeah, I would, for that reason, I would say yeah, maybe watch it. But for a general guy like, hey, would I enjoy watching this? Would I would reckon? Would yeah. you recommend I show my kids this? I'd be like, ah, nah, just, you do better. No, yeah, I better, think, man. I mean, mm-hmm. I think it would lose a lot of kids' interest. Uh, I did I watch think... it all the way through as a kid. Uh, Actually, so maybe I, the songs I, I would managed. keep kids in there. The song, yeah, the song. Because kids kind of orbit; like they don't just um, watch the movie. They kind of do their thing, and then the song comes on, and they they go back. They go back in. That um, ending, though, that ending in the cave. I don't know. It's not as it's not as exciting as it should be. It's like 
it's just kind of long. Like there are things that happen, like like you know, there are moments of action, but there's a lot of uh, you know, it's like a full minute of like Piglet like peeling his his arms and then his ears and then his eyelids open so he looks at the thing. Yeah, that's very that. There's a lot of that kind of thing. Yeah, I guess it's it's kind of hard for a movie to build in one direction that's quite quite serious and mature and maybe even grim and then for it to backpedal on all those ideas and go like no it was all facade and even if that is the whole point even if that makes sense looking back uh the the quest to get to that end is kind of it feels a bit hollow and disappointing in the end whether whether they knew like the the thematic potential here or not like whether they recognize where the story and the themes could have gone or not mm-hmm. they definitely softballed it they softballed it yeah. and it's it's kind of a shame like yeah for for a movie that has such like a dark tone um it is really pretty um flaccid you know in like yeah. it's will in its willingness to be like you know the world is bad. I I think. I think the movie should have been the should have, movie should have been longer, should have been mm. even longer, darker. Christopher Robin, they they you know they really talk about like one day one day I'll grow old, one day I'll die, my 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 stuffing will rot, you know I'll, my my stitches my stitches will tear, you know I'll I'll fall limb from limb. My innards the, were spill the, out the, into the, 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 the mag The maggots will eat my corpse. You know, yeah. we've all we've all got to deal with it, man. So, like Toy Story three, but in like a less. So, like Toy Story three, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's just Toy Story three. So, would I recommend this movie? No, watch Toy Story three. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Now that you say that, yeah, just watch Toy Story three. There. There is there is an episode of New Adventure. I talked about it in the newest video where it's straight up a Buzz Lightyear shows up and is a better toy than the other ones. And they're like oh. afraid. They're like, we're getting replaced. We got to go. And it's, oh, man. I, I don't like it because I, I don't like when they talk about themselves as toys. It's oh. weird. Like, like Winnie, Winnie the Pooh is a bear. Like, sure, he's a stuffed bear, yeah. but he's a bear. He's out in the woods. He gathers honey. Rabbit is a rabbit. Tigger is a tigger. Uh, it, 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 I don't like I don't like when they're like, oh, we're fi- we're Christopher Robin's favorite toys. We're not as good toys as this other toy. Yeah. He wants a better toy. We got to leave. I don't like I don't like that it pulled a Toy Story two there. Or yeah, it's a, weird. A toy Story one rather. It's weird for characters to like break f- through their own facade unless they always are aware of it. Um, you know, to have like because Pooh Bear seems to believe he's a bear. Uh, yeah, he Everyone, acts that everyone's. Way. A- yeah, I mean they. T- I mean they talk about that he's like yeah he's stuffed with fluff. Everyone knows that he's stuffed with fluff, mm-hmm. but he's a bear, and he's and he's Pooh Bear, and he's not like. He's not like T Rex or Mister Potato Head, who exists mm-hmm. to, who exists for Christopher Robin's pleasure. Like sure, Christopher Robin imagines, that he has life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is all sort of in Christopher Robin's head or something. But Pooh, you know, just he he has a life outside of Christopher Robin. He has his own existence and his own little thing that he's mm-hmm. doing. Whereas like 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 Woody and the toys exist for Andy's pleasure. Like being played with by Christopher Robin is their raison d'etre. Yes. You might say. Pardon my French. To be very <laughs> exciting. Yeah. Oh man. Um Anyway, well, just had to mention that. Just had to mention the Toy Story th- connection. That is a good thing to mention, actually, because, yeah, when you think of this film and its themes in relation to Toy Story 3, I, th- I think it actually kind of reveals a lot of how, how weak this movie is. Uh, yeah. Because Toy Story 3... I mean, it just, does, it just yeah. doesn't quite go there. No, it doesn't quite do it, and Toy Story 3 did without being, you know, horribly dark or anything i mean it has moments I mean, in there i mean it's pretty dark. yeah 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 it's pretty um, yeah it's got moments but it doesn't but it doesn't like, feel like yeah. inappropriate or anything you toy know toy story 3 has like a couple of powerful like moments there Th- mm-hmm. but it's yeah yeah but it's not like maudlin throughout but this yeah. movie is kind of just maudlin throughout but it doesn't really have any great moment i mean it's got Pooh's song Pooh's sad song is pretty good mm-hmm. but 
it's not like a mo it's not like a story moment it's just a really sad song yeah that's true yeah that's true i guess i like at the end i guess i like the idea when they're walking back and they see all the things that are not as bad as they imagined that's kind of a theme you know the the theme the idea that like things are scary when you're alone but when you're together you know like when you're happy it, mm-hmm. everything looks brighter you know like th- things aren't as bad as they appear when you feel bad mm-hmm. that's a good theme that's a that cool is a good theme, theme. And, I, and i like the way that it's expressed in the movie but it's almost like an accident it like the text does not like explicitly call any attention. I mean, Christopher Robin does. He does say it. He says like, "When you're alone, things are. When you're alone and there's nobody home, it's nice to be able to count on a friend <laughs> like <laughs> Pooh Bear Winnie." The- okay, so so Poo-bear. Christopher Robin says it, but it's very brief, and it's just it's kind of just there for like the visual effect at the end to like look cool. And I mean, it does look cool. I like it, but Mm -hmm. I think that could have been like the theme of the movie. I think that's a better theme than believe in yourself. Like the idea that, uh, the the idea that things aren't as bad as they seem. Like, I I, think that's a, hmm. I honestly think that's a better and more interesting theme to see. I think that off of to me, that honestly seems to be, uh, maybe, as central as all the character stuff we talked about or, or or so inherently connected with that that it's definitely there but i agree that it's it's deliver delivery of that theme is not satisfactory they um, spend you know they spend so much time on the braver stronger smarter mhm the things are scary i mean i guess you could say that the whole movie is the theme yeah. of like things are scary cuz like everything that they encounter is not real they imagine it yeah, I don't know. Just so, just so little time. So little time in the actual dialogue is devoted to it compared to those other themes that we've talked yeah. about that I think are that I think are pretty just barely serviceable. Oh yeah, barely, themes. barely. Mm. So Pooh Bear, Pooh Bear, in this case, a little, a little bit disappointing. Yeah, but so now I. Now yeah. is the time. Now is the time when I, when I plug the Ben Saints channel because I, I brought oh. the Ben Saint on here. So oh yeah, you're you better yeah. All of cool. you folks, all you folks who have never seen his lecture on Chris Chan. Oh yes, that or, is, uh, um, what is it? Tales? My break, my breakout hit, my breakout hit. Oh, I love that. I love that yeah. video so much i downloaded just the mp3 audio so that when i was at my office job <laughs> i could listen to it because it made me so happy and i found it so funny um so you know i love that it was uh you know the energy the energy in that room the energy in that room that day was electric <laughs> <laughs> oh no did you just, know yeah they're so into uh, it yeah they're so into did it. you know that uh there is a version of that lecture that was filmed in 3d Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's on the playlist. It's on the 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 PCP lectures playlist. Both versions are there. There, if if you want, there is a version filmed with a three a three three sixty camera, so you can like take you can like rotate the footage around and like watch the audience like you know reacting and like saying stuff, and you can see it from from every angle. Uh, Did if, you do that for you know, the tails? If you're into that one? thing, huh? Did you do that for the tails gets trolled one? No, we didn't have a 3D camera that time. Oh, okay. And also, like, I mean, nobody, you know, it's just like a funny thing. Oh, like, yeah. We, fil- we filmed with a 360 camera because it was cool. But then we got it and we were like, why did we do, like, what was the point? <laughs> like, it's funny that it exists, but, yeah. like, it was so much trouble. Actually, the reason why we had, there's a couple of cuts in the Sonic Lecture is specifically because the 360 camera, like, overheated. And how oh. we had to, like, let it rest. Yeah, and come back later. Um, oh, man. So it was, more, it was way more trouble than it was worth. Oh, yeah, that doesn't sound worth it. Uh, I mean, yeah. it is funny because I always would see in 360 degrees and just laugh. Like, yeah, because I would look at it like, and be like, why? Who? Like, why? why? What? What? It's so uh-huh. much. It's so overkill. Um, it's very, very stupid. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love I love that video. I love the Tales Gets Trolled lecture again. So people you... need to go listen to that. Uh, Watch it. Have you seen... I don't want. I'm sorry to talk so much about myself. I'll make this brief. But have no, you, you seen have any to. of my? Uh, you seen any of my Nuzlocke videos? Um, 
I saw, I've read your comic, I believe, about the Nuzlocke, yeah. but I haven't seen Brunswick, the actual yeah. videos. Okay, yeah, I did that comic about Brunswick the Mamoswine. That's mm-hmm. on saintcomics.com, along with all my other comics that I've made. Uh, Which are very my, good. Uh, Thank you. I like that. Uh, on my ch- yeah, a lot of the videos on my channel are these things from these two Nuzlocke series called Nuzlocke Genocide and Nuzlocke Conquest. And they are like an edited, they're, they're sort of an edited down, uh, you know, heavily, you know, there's lots of, like, I do lots of original art for them and stuff. Like, you see my party down in the corner. It's, it's all stuff that I drew. I put, oh, nice. you know, there's a lot of work went into them. They're, they're edited down. They kind of have like a story, like sort of like a meta story evolves in them. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, uh, people have told me people have told me that they've cried. It's they've made people cry before, oh. um, which is which I'm very proud. Of. I, like I heard that, and I was like, "Wow, I I did it! I accomplished everything I set out to do by playing Pokemon on the yeah. internet. I made people cry." That is the ultimate um, goal: is to make people cry. If anybody ever tells me like this video made me cry, I just I I feel. Yeah, very gratified. That's well. That's what I want to watch Tigger Tigger movie because people have told me that like Tigger movie is really good and it makes me cry and I'm like, ooh, I should probably check that out. Oh yes, should probably should probably check that out. It is uh, a yeah, seal of but uh, my 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 Nuzlocke video. There's a lot of them on my channel and they um they um they have they have like normal views, right? Mm-hmm. Like like the my big views are the the lectures, but mm-hmm. uh, you know a couple of my other like topic videos, like the one on. Uh, bamboo blade and the one on the spongebob musical have slightly more and then the nuzlocks have like you know maybe like 10 10, 10,000 tops um but if you're into pokemon and you want to cry uh nuzlocke genocide okay so i'll link i'll link to the first part of nuzlocke genocide i'll link to the lectures and i'll link to uh the most pertinent one which is probably the first part of your Pooh bear uh analysis yeah considering that that's yeah so related i'm I'm good I'm gonna make those every week from now on for for a while anyway. I'm gonna do a new episode every Friday. I'm coming out with a new uh, nice retrospective. Yeah, and at this point you're on, on those, part on those, three. and then there are new adventures. Nice, that's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, um, and I like and I like you, Loar. I think I'm really glad. I was really stoked when you uh, wanted me to be uh, your first guest on the Low Cast. Uh, thank you for having me. Oh man, I was pumped up when you agreed. You know, uh, it, it's yeah. fun to go. I mean, there was, there was no question. I guess it's fun on both sides to go from like watching somebody's stuff to, uh, conversing and collaborating and such. So that was a lot of fun, and I appreciate, uh, that you took the time to come on here and watch the movie, and uh, to make this a, hopefully a really fun time for people to listen to. Oh yeah, um, my pleasure. Um, I'll, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to be a guest again uh, one day. Oh, absolutely, good sir. I think that'd cool. be. I think that'd just be splendid. Yes. Um. So yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank and we you. We are decided to everyone. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, viewers. Yes. Absolutely. Hey, can I plug one more thing? One more quick plug Absolutely. for my other podcast. I'm also on another podcast uh, called the Procrastinators Podcast, which I do oh, with yes. a bunch of other uh, YouTube and elsewhere content creators. I would feel I would feel strange here coming onto a, a podcast and then mm-hmm. uh, plugging my other stuff and, and leaving that out. So I just want your guys would that's probably all, that's harass on you, huh? If you did that, your your fellows over there would probably harass you, and they're they are numerous. Oh, oh they're gonna harass me no matter what. Um, <laughs> they always harass you. <laughs> yeah, but I need um I need I need to have the moral high ground so that I can bear so I can bear it. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> as long as yes. you have the moral high ground. <laughs> yeah. So that that's on YouTube. Uh, it's also on iTunes. It's, but it's mostly on YouTube. Yes. So I will okay. also uh, uh, link to the Procrastinators no. podcast. No. No. Don't link the Procrastinators podcast. They don't deserve it. <laughs> make them make them make them find them on their own okay i'll post link to procrastinators podcast and then where the link would be i'll just put link redacted so. yes <laughs> <laughs> owned just just for you so that'll all be a lot of fun uh, <laughs> cool all right sick thank you for coming on it was a really fun time and... same for me as for me too thanks for having me yeah absolutely uh see you see you folks next week bye yeah thanks thanks for listening see you later